الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا السرات المستقيم سرات الذين نعنز عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على مبعث رحمة للعالمين محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبع بلسان يوم الدين إخوة الأفادل السلام عليكم ورحمة الله um, Welcome to the North Brixton Islamic Cultural Center for another episode today as well um, to look or learn from the Quran with me I have my humble Sheikh a Sheikh a Dr. Faisal Bouadi as usual, inshallah, I will recite a few ayat from Surah An-Nur, chapter 24, from verse 46 onwards. Bi-idhnillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, I will recite the ayat and explain or narrate to you the nutshell meaning of this ayat. And thereafter, I will go to my humble Abu Sheikh, Sheikh Dr. Faisal Bouadi, to tell us lessons learned. Um, Okay, now we go to the Quran, inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Laqad anzalna ayatim mubayyinat. Wallahu, wallahu yahdi man yashau ila siratim mustaqeem. ويقولون آمنا بالله وبالرسول وأطعنا ثم يتولى فريق ثم يتولى فريق منهم من بعد ذلك وما أولئك بالمؤمنين وإذا دعوا إلى الله ورسوله ليحكم بينهم إذا فريق منهم معرضون وَإِنْ يَكُنْ لَهُمُ الْحَقُّ يَأْتُوا إِلَيْهِ مُذْعِنِينَ أَفِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَدٌ أَمِ ارْتَابُوا أَمْ يَخَافُونَ أَنْ يَحِيفَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَرَسُولُهُ بَلْ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ إنما كان قول المؤمنين إذا دعوا إلى الله ورسوله ليحكم بينهم ليحكم بينهم أن يقولوا سمعنا وأطعنا وأولئك هم المفلحون ومن يطع الله ورسوله ويخشى الله ويتقه ويخشى الله وينتقه فأولئك هم الفائزون الله سيس لقد أنزلنا آيات مبينات الله سيد he has indeed sent down to myself and all of you signs that make things manifest clear Clear signs to me and you. Wallahu yahdi man yasha ila surati mustaqim. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides whom he wills to the straight path. May Allah make us be amongst those who are guided to the straight path, ya kareem. Wa yaquluna amanna billahi wa rasulul rasul. Allah said that disbelievers, they see of the hypocrites, the Sheikh will explain to you, the hypocrites actually. The hypocrites, they say, Amanna Billah. When they come to you, they say, We believe in Allah, wa bi Rasul, and we believe in the Prophet. Whatever he says, we obey, we believe in him. Wa atu'na. And they will claim to be people who obey Allah and the Messenger. Thumma yatawalla fariqun minhum min ba'di thalik. But when they turn away after that, they become or part of them or sorry some of them we turn away from the deen or what you instruct them or you tell them to do Allah said those are not really believers they are not true believers at all when they are summoned 
or invited to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger in order to make judgment or to judge between them Allah said إِذَا فَرِيقٌ مِّنْهُمْ مُعْرِدُونَ Behold, some of them decline to come. وَإِنْ يَكُلْ لَهُمُ الْحَقِّ يَأْتُوا إِلَيْهِ مُذْعِنِينَ But if the right is on their own side, MashaAllah, they come to the Prophet Muhammad SAW and to that in submission because they know they have right, they are happy to come. Allah said, أَفِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضْ أَمْرَضْ أَمِرُ تَابُ Allah said, is it that there is a disease in their hearts or they have doubts? Am yahif Allahu alayhim wa rasooluh Or are they in fear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger will deal with them? Bal ulaika humu dhulimun Yeah, we did, sorry, thank you very much. Or do they, are they in fear that they will, if they come to the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deal with them unjustly with all, whatever matters they will, they will bring Allah said those are the oppressive ones they are the wrongdoers I love this ayah Allah said the answer of the believers listen إِنَّمَا كَانَ قَوْلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ The answer, the response of the believers. إِذَا دُعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ When they are invited or summoned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَرَسُولِهِ and his messenger لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَهُمْ To judge amongst them or between them. أَنْ يَقُولُوا Their response will be سَمِعْنَا We've heard وَأَدُعْنَا And we are going to obey. This is the characteristics of the true believer. They always say, we are hard and will obey to the Quran and Sunnah. Allah said, وَأُولَٰئِكَ Such people, هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ They are the successful ones, those who have prosper. May Allah make us be amongst them, Ya Kareem. وَمَنْ يُتِعِ اللَّهِ Anyone who obeys Allah, وَرَسُولَهُ And his messenger, وَيَخْشَ اللَّهِ and they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> they fear Allah. وَيَتَّقِي And they put of course a demarcation between them and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited. Allah said, فَأُولَٰئِكَ Such people هُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ They are the successful ones. They are the ones who have profited in this dunya and the hereafter. May Allah make us be amongst them. Without much ado, my dear brothers and sisters in the deen, let me pass the mic now to my humble Sheikh to tell us lessons learned from this wonderful ayat. For let the Sheikh in Ashkura. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf wa salamina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sallam ajma'in wa ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, you thank Allah to be among the living ones after this time. You are very fortunate. Once again, Allah has brought back our souls to our bodies. Just to test us to see what I'm going to do and also to give us a lot of time. So we have time or another chance to repent. What we are talking about, last time we talked about different aspects of how things prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want to show that everybody remember all those things, isn't it? How the things they praise Allah, they prostrate unto Him, everything. I'm sure everybody had known that one, isn't it? Or you forget it? You haven't forgotten it? Okay. If you have forgotten, because our main purpose in this life is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is the greatest part of our worship? What is the greatest part of our worship? Who can tell us? No. What's the greatest part of our worship? When we worship Allah, the greatest part. Now? Huh? I have.
five, six people talking. What's the greatest part of our worship? The reward. Someone said to earn the reward. Now. Okay. What is the greatest part of our worship? Salah. Okay. And what else? So worship. So worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Mashallah. In other words, when when you look at it, the greatest part in our worship is that of Sajda. Sujud. That's why when, when you read Quran chapter 16, I have 48 to 55. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, even since that we think there are things that can not have the feelings and so forth that we do, they do prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, is is Surah um, 16, Surah Nahl. We're going to look at the Sheikh said chapter um, verse 48 to 55. Inshallah, we do that when we come back from Salah. Inshallah, okay? Zakumullah khair. I know. Yeah, now they're shorting the time. So, we need to be done. Uh, yeah, come on, do one quarter to seven. Yeah, come on, do one quarter to seven. Just a white one. Okay, let's get our Quran, brothers and sisters. Get our Quran. Jazakum Allah Khairan. Get our Quran. We're going to look at Ayah six, chapter 16 from verse 41, 46. Sorry, 48 to 55. 48, hmm? 48 to 55. Yeah, 48, yeah, 48 to 55. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm starting from 48, Sheikh said. No, not 48. Yeah, 48, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's start now. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani wa-rajim. Bismillahi wa-rahman wa-rahim. Wa-salatu wa-salamu ala mab'uuthi rahmatan ila alameen Muhammad ibn Abdullah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'a bin sallam al-deen. Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive each and every one of us our sins and grant us al Jannah bi ghayri hisab. Those who are sick amongst us, amongst the Muslim Ummah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us live, die, and be raised the day of judgment as by us Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our best day is the day we're going to meet Him, Ya Allah. And may the brothers and sisters welcome to the North Bricks and Islamic Cultural Centre for another episode um, of our weekly sessions or lectures here in London. My humble Sheikh, Sheikh Dr. Faisal Buadi, was talking about the manners of Manavism, the character of um, the creation of Allah SWT and how they worship Allah in different way. The creation worship Allah SWT in different manners. So the Sheikh said we should go to chapter 16, Surah Nahal, chapter 16, Allah SWT. <coughs> We're going to look at um, verse 48 to verse 55. As usual, I will recite the ayat and narrate to you the nutshell meaning that we go to the Sheikh. Be it in Allah Ta'ala. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani ur-rajim. Bismillahi ur-rahman ur-rahim. أولم يروا إلى ما خلق الله من شيء يتفيأ ذلاله 
يتفيأ ذلاله عن اليمين وعن الشمائل سجدا لله يتفيأ ذلاله عن اليمين وعن الشمائل سجدا لله وهم داخرون ولله يسجد ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ولله يسجد ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من دابة من دابة والملائكة وهم لا يستكبرون يخافون ربهم من فوقهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون الله الله أكبر وقال الله لا تتخذوا إلهين اثنين إنما هو إله واحد إنما هو إله واحد فإياي فارهبون وله ما في السماوات والأرض وله الدين واصبا أفغير الله تتقون وما بكم من نعمة فمن الله ثم إذا مسكم الدر فإليه تجأرون ثم إذا كشف الدر عنكم إذا فريق منكم بربهم يشركون ليكفروا بما آتيناهم فتمتعوا فسوف تعلمون الأصيص. أولم يروا إلى ما خلق الله من شيء Do they not look at Allah's creation amongst all things يتفيأ ذلاله Allah said how the shadows turn around سبحان الله Your shadow the shadow of the trees and all the creation, the things that Allah created. Allah said, look how the shadow turns around. Anil from the right, was and from the left, sujada, prostrating themselves lillah to Allah. The shadow prostrating themselves to Allah. Subhanallah. Wahum dakhirun. They do that in a humblest manner. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. Allah said, وَلِلَّهِ يَسْجُدُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ And to Allah, all that is in the sky above and the earth below prostrate in worship. مِنْ دَابَ Out of His creatures, the moving creatures, وَالْمَلَائِكَةَ As well as the angels as well. وَهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ They do not become arrogant when it comes to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They submit themselves. SubhanAllah. Allah said, as the Shaykh asked why? Because يَخَافُونَ رَبَّهُمْ مِنْ فُوْقِهِمْ they fear their Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the high above them. They fear Allah. وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُعْمَرُونَ And they do exactly as they are told or commanded. Subhanallah. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees, command you, order you, لَا تَتَّخِذُوا إِلَى حَيْنِ اثْنَيْنِ do not take besides him another God. Do not worship Juju or whatever it is. Only Allah. Allah said, Innama huwa ilahun wahid. Your Lord, your God is one. Only one God. Allah said, Fa'iyyai farhabun. Only me you must fear. Allah said, Only him you should fear alone. Only Allah. Don't fear anyone except Allah. وَلَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ To him belong all that is in the sky above and the earth below. وَلَهُ الدِّينِ 
wasiba. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, belong of course, the religion. So him belong the religion all the time, always. So only Allah you should fear. Subhanallah. And Allah continue. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنْ اللَّهِ Oh sorry. أَفَغَيْرَ اللَّهِ تَتَّقُونَ Then do you, after all this, Allah said He owns all, the, all that is in sky above and the earth below. And to Him belong the religion always. So besides Allah, would you fear anyone besides Allah? Or then will you fear another than Allah? No, you shouldn't. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Whatever good fortune you achieve, you earn, is from Allah. Wallahi, no one else gives it to you except Allah. ثُمَّ إِذَا مَسَّكُمُ الدُّرُّ And when distress, misfortune, touch you, overtake you, فَإِلَيْهِ you run unto him, cry <laughs> with groans. You cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, please, Allah, help me. Allah, do this. It's to Allah you cry when you face difficulties. I remember at one time the Sheikh was saying, even the kafir, the non believer, if they are in the plane, for example, the plane is about to fall down, what happens? Who did they call? What did they say? Oh my God. They say it and they said they don't believe in God. But they say, oh my God, God, God. Because it is within the instinct. Allah said, but when he removes the distress from you, Behold, some of you, that's the time they join Allah with the partner, saying, had he not been a pilot, was a good pilot, would have crushed. They forgot that Allah saved them. Hey, Allahu Akbar. Had he not been because of the talisman I'm having here, would have crushed. Had he not been because of this, mashallah, if not the driver was, mashallah, very skillful, would have got accident today. He forgot or she forgot that only Allah saved him from what he went through, he was going to go through. Hey, subhanallah. Man is ungrateful, huh? And very quick to forget. Allah said, and at that moment they become ungrateful in other words ingratitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favor they become ungrateful to Allah Allah said then enjoy no problem for a little while do whatever you want to do mm. Enjoy the brief of your day. <laughs> do whatever you wish to do. But however, فَسَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ Very soon, you will know. Subhanallah. Very soon, you will know. May Allah save us from His chastisement this world and the year after. May the brothers and sisters, this is the nutshell of, uh, meaning of the ayat I have recited without much ado. I'll pass the mic down to the Abul Sheikh for the Tafat al Sheikh Mashkura. Well, mashallah. Look at this inanimate things that we think. The mountains, the trees. Sometimes we become so tired, especially during the summertime, when you get the tree under the tree, the shade, so oh, let me rest here and so forth. You don't even say Bismillah. You don't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas that tree is prostrating to Allah while you are sleeping, enjoying the shade of that tree. SubhanAllah. This is something you have to learn. Because as you can see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said everything. In any things, as the Prophet sallallahu had said, I used to see and I still can know the stone or rock that he used to give me salam in Mecca whenever I pass by. Look. And you know the story. 
when Prophet ﷺ went to Medina and he had his place as masjid and that palm tree, the stuff of it, whenever he is making the khutbah or is, uh, saying anything, he used to lean against it. The day that the lady said, O Messenger of Allah, let me make member for you. Look, a lady. Say, Messenger of Allah, let me make a member for you. He said, Sure, he said, Yes. He said, Professor Asmah said, Okay, go ahead. So she made very nice member for Professor Allah. So on Friday, the member was brought. Professor Asmah went to give the khutbah. And when he started to give the khutbah, because now he is sitting, standing on that member, that palm tree started to cry. Crying like a baby that everybody can hear in the masjid. And the Prophet has to stop and came and put his hand on it. It's enough. It's enough, it's enough. And then he was stopping like a little baby when the mother is, you know, making the baby to sleep or and so forth. The Prophet said it was crying because it was missing that blessing that he used to get. Look, when I used to stand by itself, and now I am now standing distant. Look at it. SubhanAllah, you become afraid of everything, but you forget to become afraid of the one who created it, isn't it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So everything frustrates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether you like it or not, accept mankind. Some of them, as Allah had said, you do make shirk. When the time comes, oh, can it not be because of this thing? You know, especially in Africa and other places, they will have talisman sometimes around their hands, some of them around their waist, some of them around their neck. Even the ladies even have something like that. Even the ladies, they have some, you know? And he said, oh, had it not been because of this, oh, today I will have finished. But by that time, he did not call this one. When he was in that trouble, he was only calling Allah. But as soon as he came out of it, he started to give all the credit to that thing, making shirk. So this is one of the things we as believers, you should not do it. Now, the next aspect of uh, life that you have to bear in mind, as Allah had said, the same su uh, Surah 24 that you were doing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us about different aspects that you have to bear in mind about. He said, can't you see every created things, all the Daba, the creeping creatures, including mankind, the animals, the genes, all of them, they prostrate and they also praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of them praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. In the first ayahs that you spoke about, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala linked the trees and everything, their prostrations, their praises of Allah, their worship to that of, of the angels. All of them they are afraid of Allah, except man who is enjoying himself with all these facilities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. That he should not forget. So many times he said, Oh, I I am this, I am that, I'm so no. We have to humble ourselves. If these things can humble themselves to worship Allah, we must humble ourselves. Isn't it? Yes, because we are all naked to the earth. The day you came to this world, you were naked, isn't it? Yes. 
you go back and when you be raised up again you come out naked like the day you were born okay so what I mean not becoming very humble you become so of course and bitterness you know I hate this one I hate that one all this bitterness in our hearts it is too much how many fishes can you carry in your hand if you have fishes here and you want you to carry them to take some with you home how many can you carry fish how many I said fish fish you have fish and you need to carry and then they have more he said everybody come and take fish how many can you carry you carry whatever you can how many you think you can carry with you to take it home it depends on the size of the fish. Yeah. Okay. If it's Mina, it's Boku. Small fish in Africa. The small fish you can see. Mina is much. Uh huh. The hair. You can scoop. Uh huh. You can scoop. Yeah, yeah. Scoop. Mm -hmm. It's small. Yeah. Those tiny ones. Yeah. What okay. about what about this? You know the herrings and so forth. Uh, how many? How many can you carry? One. Only one? No, no. I can take more. We have a family. He said, take. Any how much you want? Not box. You mean it's one. there like that. It is there, plenty. Or you take you in your hands. How many can you? No. You say carry them to your house. How many you think you can carry with you? With your hands. Uh, you say, you I can take hands. more than twenty. You can carry more than twenty. <laughs> Mashallah. Anybody else? Can you carry a big fish? How many can you carry? Two uh, kuta. Big fish. Yeah. All right. Mashallah. <laughs> now, how many can you carry? <laughs> yes, how many? How many? Two. Two. Only two? Don't be, don't be like a treasurer. The treasurer said he will carry the hands and then put one on the head. And the other one on the back going like that. MashaAllah. Very good. Some of them say 20, 10, 5, 6. If you are asked to carry that for one week, without dropping them <laughs> can you do it <laughs> yes one week you are carrying that fish that you have for one week with the smell and everything for one week can you do it you can't well then that is the bitterness the hate you have in your heart it smells more than that you have against your brother or sister. So if this rotten fish, you, can, you cannot carry it for one week, how are you carrying this bitterness in your heart every day? Why? Why are you doing that? Take it away so you get more storage for what? For good things, isn't it? Yes. Take it away. Because it does not help you. It kills you. Isn't it? Yes. So this is one thing you have to bear in mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, we should not take two ilah, isn't it? Two gods. Besides, it means a believer, you cannot have two gods in your heart. The love of this world and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, two of them cannot stay in the same heart. Is it? Either you choose this one or you choose the other one. And you know the woman who went to the court? and told the court that, look, the judge, I want you to have this divorce for me, to divorce my husband. No, I said, why, why is that you want to divorce the husband? He said, no, I just want, I cannot stay with this man again anymore. I want to divorce. When the husband was brought, and he said, oh, I didn't do anything bad to this woman. I love her too much. I do everything for her. 
She said, yes, that's the reason why I want to divorce you. I'm asking divorce from you. Said, what kind of problem is this? Didn't I give you everything? I take you to overseas, abroad, and enjoy yourself. I bought so many things for you. And he said, yes. That is the main reason I want to divorce from you. <laughs> Allah Akbar, subhanAllah. This woman. He said, look, didn't I abandon even my family? Just for you, for your sake. He said, yeah, that's the main, main reason I want to divorce from you. So the judge said, why? He said, this man, he had given preference to me over his mom. Allah. That's beautiful. He gives me everything, but he abandons his mom, who carried him for nine months yeah. so and waiting for two years. Yeah. Took care of him, educated him, and now he has given that preference to me over his mom. He said, if he can turn his back against the womb that born him, he will do that to me. I'm not waiting for the day he will turn his back against me. So I want to divorce from him. He said, please, I will change. You say no. He said, the only thing you can do, go back to your mom. In that preference you gave it to me, go and give it back to her. That is your expiation of your sins. He said, look, he said, oh, please, I will do everything. He said, what is that you are doing this? Thing? I'm saving you from the hellfire, you know? You are just at the pit of hell. You are going inside there by abandoning your mom and giving preference to your wife. You say you are entering into hellfire. When the Prophet said you can get a gender from where? Huh? He didn't say from our wives, isn't it? And this is the mother you have abandoned. So if you don't get a gender, where are you going to? That's why he said, I'm saving you, but you still want to go. You want to go inside that fire. <laughs> you see? That is it. This is the love of Allah. How many of you will do that? Your husband gives you everything, tell you here and there and so for the holidays and everything. And then you will say that, look, because of that, I'm going to divorce you. You are in the masjid, you know. Don't put your hand up. <laughs> Nobody will do that, they isn't it? <laughs> Nobody will do that. But that they will say, let me take from what I have. Yes. You know? Yeah. Or even if you become very angry, why are you all the time sending things to your mom and so on and so forth? But a believer, you should give preference. Your love for Allah has to overcome everything. This is what we need to do. So, Allah said, don't take to ilah. Don't love this world. And also loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same time. It is not possible. It's not possible. Because this pot, with water and fire, they cannot stay together. Can they? If you put fire inside, like a charcoal or anything, with fire inside this, and it has water inside it. Can they stay together? No. What will happen? One will take over the other, isn't it? Yes. So likewise, a believer, you must have the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that you have in this world, more than anything else. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the hypocrites how these hypocrites, when they come to, they say, oh, you believe in Allah, you believe in his messenger and so forth. But when it comes in terms of the issues that Allah said this, or his messenger said that, they said, oh, no, no, no. Then they turn away. 
And this is what you, most of the time you do. When it comes to our culture, our uh, traditions, our customs, no, no, no. Even the person you say no, but you know this is our custom, you have been doing this in for how many years, and our forefathers and so forth. SubhanAllah. Allah is saying this, his messenger said that. He said, yes, I know, but you see, this is what our forefathers have been doing and so on and so forth. A believer should not do that. A believer, when you hear anything, what are you supposed to say? Samirina wa atala. You heard and we obey. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ayah 52, in Surah to nur he said, oh, no, no, I have 51. He said, Inna ma kena qawla al-mu'minin iza du'u ila Allah wa rasoolihi liyakma baylahum an yakunu sami'na wa a'tana wa ula'ika umul muflihun. This is supposed to be the etiquette of a believer. Yes. Whenever they have any issue about anything, if they said, look, this is what Allah had said, this is what his messenger had said. He said, well, we heard and then you obey. Allah said, they will be the successful ones. Because, Allah has given us the choice here. Whosoever obeys Allah and obeys his messenger and fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and protects himself or herself from the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are the ones who will be the successful. That anything you have in this world, you are going to leave them here. Anything. Because you are just Khalifa. Khalifa means what? What is the meaning of Khalifa? What? Someone said Khalifa is transit. The other one says stranger. Stranger. The other one says the one who lives for Allah. And a traveler. Hey. Where do you study Arabic language? When Allah said that, I'm going to go to Khalifa. Khalifa on the earth. Like someone you take that, like that caretaker. 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 Mm. It means the people, you are not going to stay for for good all the time. Somebody will come and inherit, take over you. And it's like the house that you go to. Oh, today they gave me this house and so forth. You are so happy. Somebody was there. Maybe the person was not even happy in that place. And he has left. And you are so happy then. <laughs> he came you now. You are so happy jumping, calling this one and that one and so forth. But the one who was there did not even enjoy it. He didn't want it. So he, he wasn't even move. Okay? So this is how this world is. No matter what you have, there were some people before you who had more than what you have. So you have to humble yourself. And if you are all, as I always said, you are all visitors on this earth. And every visitor has to go to where? His home or his country, isn't it? Yes. And what is our country? Where did you come from? Huh? al -Jannah. That's where you come from. That's our home. You came here, you are visitors. The Surah has said, Hatta Zunutu no Makabi. Iziara. Visiting. And everybody who will visit some place, but always you will go to. So a day will come when you visit that grave, you go inside there, you become visitors in the grave. And as a visitor, one day we have to be taken out. And that how where your destination will be, either in the Jannah or in 
This is how Allah has made it. May Allah save us. Ya Allah. Amen. So you should not forget, you should always remember Allah and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You remember subhanallah wa bihamdihi adada khalqihi. Everybody knows, isn't it? All right, say it, let him hear. Yeah. Uh-huh. Adada. Adada. Khalqihi. Mm-hmm. This one's the eighties with chicken and chips. <laughs> hey, London, too much chicken and chips. Subhanallah. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Adad khalqihi. ورضا نفسه وزنة عرشه ومداد كلماته. Very important dua. Can you say it again? سبحان الله وبحمده عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وزنة عرشه وَمِدَادَ كَلِمَاتِهِ Okay, can you say it now, huh? سبحان الله وبحمده Mashallah, who can tell us the meaning? Who can volunteer? Hey, hey, brother, I'm asking you to volunteer. <laughs> no, you had it. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. What does it mean? Glory be to Allah. And to him belong all what? All praise. Adad khalqihi. And all his creations. Uh huh. According to the number of his creation. Waridu nafsihi. And by his um, um, self, um, um, praise and all his. Okay. Who can go for that one? Now see him. All that plays. According to the way he plays, he's present. Yeah. Okay. And then the next one was in at Arashihi. According to what? Uh -huh, his throne, but what? What's about his throne? The weight of his throne. Wa wa midad kalimati. And the ink what? The ink. The ink of his words. Mashallah. May Allah accept it from all of us. Fadilashik. So you should not forget all the time. Whenever you are going, you are sleeping. Try to say it, because you do not know what time. Al Malk al Maut will come to you. Present. Yes. Say, Wa Abdu Rabbaka Hatta Yatiya Kaliyakin. Worship your Lord until the certainty comes to you. And that one is nothing except what? Al Maut. That's come. That is it. When that day comes, you finish, you finish and then you go. And nobody can bring us back again except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after that, you go to ayah 53. Ayah 53, the same surah, surah Nur. Okay. We're going to start from ayah 53, right? I will just read it and give you the nutshell meaning. Then I pass it to the sheikh to tell us lesson learned from there, inshallah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani wa-rajim. وَيَقْسَمُ بِاللَّهِ جَهَدَ أَيْمَانِهِمْ لَإِنْ أَمَرْتَهُمْ لَيَخْرُجُنْ لَيَخْرُجُنْ لَإِنْ أَمَرْتَهُمْ لَيَخْرُجُنْ قُلْ لَا تُقْسِمُوا طَاعَةً طَاعَةً مَعْرُوفَةً وَيَقْسَمُ بِاللَّهِ جَهَدَ أَيْمَانِهِمْ لَإِنْ أَمَرْتَهُمْ لَيَخْرُجُنْ 
قل لا تقسموا طاعة معروفا إن الله خبير بما تعملون قل أطيع الله وأطيع الرسول فإن تولوا فإنما عليه ما حمل وعليكم ما حملتم وإن تطيعوه تهتدوا وما على الرسول إلا البلاغ المبين وعد الله الذين آمنوا منكم وعملوا الصالحات وعد الله الذين آمنوا وعملوا وعد الله الذين آمنوا منكم وعملوا الصالحات لا يستخلفنكم لا يستخلفنهم في الأرض كما استخلف الذين من قبلهم ولا يمكنهم ولا يمكنن لهم دينهم الذي ارتضى لهم ولا يبدلنهم من بعد خوفهم أمنا يعبدونني لا يشركون بي شيئا ومن كفر بعد ذلك فأولئك هم الفاسقون وأقيموا الصلاة وآتوا الزكاة وأطيعوا وأطيعوا الرسول وأطيعوا الرسول لعلكم ترحمون لا تحسبن الذين كفروا معجزين في الأرض ومأواهم النار ولبئس المصير يا أيها الذين آمنوا ليستأذنكم ليستأذنكم الذين ملكت أيمانكم والذين لم يبلغوا الحلم منكم ثلاث مرات من قبل صلاة الفجر وحين تدعون ثيابكم من الظهيرة ومن بعد صلاة العشاء ثلاث عورات لكم ليس عليكم ولا عليهم جناح بعدهن طوافون عليكم بعدكم على بعد كذلك يبين الله لكم الآيات والله عليم حكيم وإذا بلغ الأطفال منكم الحلم فليستأذنوا كما استأذن الذين من قبلهم كذلك يبين الله لكم آياته والله عليم حكيم والقواعد من النساء التي لا يرجون نكاحا التي لا يرجون نكاحا فليس عليهن جناح أن يدعن ثيابهن فليس عليهن جناح أن يدعن ثيابهن غير متبرجات غير متبرجات بزينة وأن يستعففن خير لهن والله سميع عليم خلاصيس وأقسموا بالله جهد أيمانهم لئن أمرتهم لا يخرجون When they come to you they swear by Allah they take the strongest oath by Allah saying that if you command us, we will go out with you. قُلْ لَا تُقْسِمُوا Allah said, tell them, do not swear by Allah or take oath for something that you know that you're not going to do. It's hypocrisy. Allah said, don't do that. He said, دُعَةُ مَعْرُوفُ Obedience is more reasonable. And Allah continues saying, In Allah khabirun bima ta'amalun. Because verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is acquainted with all that you do. He's aware of everything. Qul, say to them, Ati'u Allah, obey Allah wa ati'u Rasul and obey his messenger. But if they turn away 
فإنما عليه ما حمل وعليكم ما حملتم. If they turn away, he is only responsible for the duty placed on him. And that's the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is only responsible for his own duty placed on him. And they will be responsible as well for their own duties placed on them. No one will carry someone's load yom al Wa in tuti'u, but if you obey Allah and his messenger, tuti'u, you obey the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tahtadu, then you will be on the right guidance. وَمَا عَلَى الرَّسُولِ إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينِ The messenger's duty is nothing but to preach the clear message of Allah. That is his own duty. If you want, you obey. And if you don't, then that's on you. But don't forget Allah says here, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised those who believe amongst you, those who believe in Allah, وَعَمِلُوا الصُّولِحَاتِ And they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I mean they do good deeds after they believe in Allah, they do righteous deeds. لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Allah says, I guarantee them that if they believe in Allah and they do righteous deeds, they will inherit this land, the power of this land. Subhanallah. May Allah make us be amongst them, Ya Kareem. كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ Just like the way Allah SWT granted it to those before them. And then Allah SWT continues saying, وَلَيُمَكِّنَنَّهُمْ وَلَيُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمُ الَّذِي ارْتَضَى لَهُمْ And Allah SWT will establish in authority their religion, the one which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for them. And that is Islam. Subhanallah. وَلَيُبَدِّلَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنَا Allah said, I will replace for them, yeah? The fear with what? With security. Whatever fear they have, Allah said, I will place, I mean, security yeah, and peace. Beautiful. And then Allah continue. And this is a condition, huh? Sheikh said this is a condition. Let me go to the ayah for you to understand exactly what you have to do. The condition. Allah said, Wa'ida Allahu Ladina Amanu. Allah has promised those who believe in him that there is no God except who? Allah. And they believe in the messenger of the Rasul. And not only that, Allah said, Wa Amilu. So they had they do righteous deeds. If they do this, they have faith in Allah and the Rasul and they do, do righteous deeds. Allah said, La yastakhlifannahum fil ard kama astakhlifa al-ladina min qablihim. Allah said, I will make them inherit the power of this land just like the way Allah gave or granted those before them. Wala yumakkinanna lahum deenahum al-ladhi rtada lahum. Allah will make them establish, or Allah will establish, yeah, for them, in authority, their religion, the one which Allah SWT has chosen for them. Is the condition, the Sheikh said. Allah will replace the insecurity, the fear they have, with what? With peace and security. Subhanallah. MashaAllah. Allah said, from here, what do they do? Ya'budunani. And they worship me. La yushrikuna bi shay'a. They must not join me with a partner. That's the main condition. Ya'budunani. They worship me. La yushrikuna bi shay'a. They must not join me with any other partner. Any other God. But Allah said, Waman kafara ba'da thalik. Anyone who will go against this condition, anyone who disobey Allah and worship something else besides Allah, Allah said, for ulaika humul fasiqun. Allah said, those are the rebellious ones. These are the rebels. Wa aqimu salah. Establish regular prayer. Wa atu zakah. 
and give zakat. Obey the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ By doing so, you will receive mercy from Allah. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala pour His mercy and blessings on all of us. لَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مُعْجِزِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ Allah said, do not think that the unbelievers can escape from His punishment in this earth. No one can escape from Allah. وَمَأْوَاهُمُ النَّارِ at the end of the day, their place of abode will be Jahannam. Allah said, Wala bi'sal masir. What a bad refuge. Now let's save us from that, Ya Kareem. Okay, continue. Allah SWT continue in verse 58 saying, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. He said, O oh, you who believe, liyasta'zinkum al ladhina malakat aymanukum. It's let like those whom your right hand possesses, let them seek permission from you. وَالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَبْلُغُ الْحُلْمَ مِنْكُمْ ثَلَاثَ مَرَّاتِ And for those, the children amongst you, those who do not have come to the, or reach the age of puberty, they must seek permission before they enter to your home, her rooms, the Sheikh would explain that anyway. They seek permission three times before they come to you. And then Allah SWT bring the explanation now. What does he mean by seeking permission three times? <laughs> Allah said, Min qabli salat al fajr. Before salat al fajr, وَحِينَ تَدَعُونَ ثِيَابَكُمْ مِنَ الظَّهِيرَةِ Before the morning prayer, Salatul Fajr, and also as well the while of when you will remove your clothes for the words, noonday heat, before the whole. The Sheikh will explain that to you now, yeah? مِنْ بَعْدِ الصَّلَاةِ الْعِشَاءِ وَمِنْ بَعْدِ الثَّلَاةِ الْعِشَاءِ and also as well, after Salat al-Isha, they must not come into your rooms without what? Good. So it's three times now, right? Mm -hmm. Follow up. Allah said, ثَلَاثُ عَوْرَاتٍ لَكُمْ These are three times, in other words, Allah used the word عَوْرَات. عَوْرَات, I don't have anything to say except naked times. The times you have to rest or you have your own privacy. لَيْسَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَلَا عَلَيْهِمْ جُنَاحٌ بَعْدَ Is it? My dear? Okay. بَعْدَ هُنْ Allah said, There is no burden on you or on them after those times. There is no sin upon them coming without permission. Thank you. In other words, the Sheikh said, comment on that, there is no sin for them to come without permission if it is not within these prescribed times, right? Tawafuna alaykum ba'dukum ala ba'd. All of you attend each other, mutual go around and attend one another, right? Doing domestic things and etc. Yubayyinu Allahu lakum al ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make his signs clear to you. Wallahu Halimun Alimun Hakim. Allah is the all knowing and the most wise. Allah said, وَإِذَا بَلَغَ الْأَطْفَالِ مِنْكُمُ الْحُلْمِ When the children they reach the age of puberty, Allah said, فَلْيَسْتَأْذِنُ كَمَا اسْتَأْذَنَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ They must seek permission as well, just like those before them. They must seek permission. كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ this is how Allah SWT explained His signs, His words to you. Wallahu alimun hakim. Allah SWT is all knowing and the most wise. And Allah said, Wallqawa'idu min al nisa, allati la yarjuna nikahan. Allah said, such elderly women, 
those who have passed the time of marriage, you know that the prospects of marriage. She will explain that. I have no experience in that, yeah? <laughs> Allah said, فَلَيْسَ عَلَيْهِنَّ جُنَاحٌ أَنْ يَدَعْنَ ثِيَابَهُنْ غَيْرَ مُتَبَرِّجَاتِ بِزِينَ Allah said, it is not a problem or sin or blame on them if they lay aside their outer, outer, sorry, outer garments. The garments, provided they make not a wanting display of their beauty. In other words, they do not, provided that they are not there to expose their beauty, bringing it out. وَأَنْ يَسْتَعْفِفْنَا خَيْرٌ لَهُنْ For them to put themselves in the best, modest manner, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, is better for them. وَاللَّهُ سَمِيعٌ Allah is the all hearing. He hears everything and also as well. Alim is the all knowing. This is a very, very important aspect. I will pass the mic now to the Sheikh to start dwell in them. Very, very important. Well, subhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us uh, before some sort of conditions that if you follow the Izin Lahi Ta'ala, He will make us be the establishers on this earth. Why nowadays Muslims are afraid of everything? I mean, so many times Muslims, some Muslims, they don't even want to uh, make themselves known as they are Muslims when they are going out, isn't it? Why? Because of what? Because they are afraid, isn't it? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, if you worship Him alone, you obey Him and obey the Messenger and you do righteous deeds, and you worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will make us be the establishers on this earth. Yes, as He did it to those who were before us. These are the conditions. But are you following that condition? <coughs> Do you fear Allah? You fear human beings more than you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how can we achieve this kind of a condition? We can't. Aren't we making partners with Allah in terms of our worship? It is time for us to pray, it is time to do this, it is time to do that. Or some people say, well, I don't have time at all, you know, because I have so many work to do. I have to go from this work, from there, I have to go to that one. And, and therefore, and when I come home, I'm so tired and I need to uh, have something to eat. And then I have to go to sleep because I have to wake up very early in the morning to go to another one. Good job. SubhanAllah. We have time for all those things, mashallah. But for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't have time. And who gives us that kind of health? When you wake up in the morning, and you cannot move, what's happened to you? Can you go? You can't. You can't. Allah has blessed us with so many things, subhanAllah. But unfortunately, we do not become grateful to Allah. They don't become grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you wake up, well, that's why I always tell the people, if you are sleeping in the night and your phone rings, unless if the phone is closer to you, which is not also advisable, some people when they sleep, they put the phone very close to them, they even put their hands, their hands will go on this and so forth. It is not good. Why? Because of what? The radiation that comes from it. You see, it's not good. Yeah. All right, it's not good for us. But should in case 
especially some people may be sleeping upstairs and you have made life, the line for maybe perhaps downstairs in the living room and in the night you may hear it ringing for example and you are asleep all of a sudden you get up what do you do you do what okay you run for it isn't it good this is very dangerous and that's what makes some people they get stroke and other things some of they just get up like that and all of a sudden they just what fall down why because when you sleep subhanallah Allah is so great so merciful when you sleep the blood that goes to the brain and so so forth it has been stopped it got only a little bit over there so that the brain will become what cool and comfortable and comfortable so the time you get up there is no blood over there so the brain your head becomes light. Sometimes you see the whole, uh, don't this what is called, uh, the same house or your bed and everything is just running, going around like that. And what happens after that? You fall down. Just, you know, he wants to go and listen to that call and say it. He should not do that. Especially nowadays you have answering the machines and so on and so forth. Or if it is something more important, the person will call back again, isn't it? So what to do? If you are sleeping and you wake up, lie down on the bed for at least 30 seconds. Don't get off. And then sit on the bed for another 30 seconds. another 30 seconds so that the heart start pumping instant then you come and put your legs you sit by the bed and then you hang your legs the blood now is going that side and after that you can stand and go if you like you can run to my house <laughs> <laughs> after that you can stand and go and likewise, so many people also, they get falling down unconscious in the bathroom. You know why? You know why? No, it's better that you don't know. Because so many of us, when you go to the bathroom, you get up in the morning, you go to the bathroom. Where do you start with the water? You start from the head. So many people they start from the head, which is very dangerous because the blood capillaries it has not yet reached there properly. So by that time you become this and you fall down. So you have to start from where? From the legs coming. But the blood is educating already for you when you can. So Allah has made so many things very easy for us. But because we are very hasty people, you want it, you want it very quick, very quick. And that is our problem. So a believer, you should take all kinds of precautions and so forth, whatever thing you are doing. It's a time of Okay. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us uh, about what we are supposed to do. He said you must perform salat, give zakat, obey Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ayah 56, so that you may be shown what? Mercy. MashaAllah.
our salat is very important. And also the zakat that you give, the charity that you give, the more you give, the more you get. That's how Allah has said. And you should not forget it. According to Adi ibn Khatim, he said, Messenger of Allah, والسلام, when you were sitting, he told us three things. He said, one of them, he said, a woman would come from where? From Iraq side, a place known as Hera. She will come by herself. Bin Gairi Jarin, that's what he said in Sahih Muslim. Without anyone accompanying her. That means a so Bahra. And she will come by herself to the house of Allah until she will make tawaf and she will not become afraid of anything. That means there will be peace and the world will become like a small world. Yet a woman can move, can go here and there and so forth, can travel without any fear. Especially nowadays, if you are going to your country, you are just inside the earth. Inside the plane, isn't it? That has maybe sometimes about 300 people, some of them, some of them about 500. Okay? You get three meals. You can sleep, you can you have everything. There's no fear. And according to Adi ibn Hatim, he said, I saw when I was in Mecca after the death of Prophet, I saw a woman from the same place, from the Iraq side, the same area, who came to Mecca. When I saw her, I asked her where she came from. She said she came from that particular place. I said, I was supposed to surprise. Who came with you? She said she came by herself. Perform her eyes, make the walk without fear. No matter. He said, yes. Professor Sama said this. Then the second one. He said, you will get the patient. King, you will conquer that place. And the necklace, the golden necklace that that man has, it will be given to Suraka. You know who was Suraka? Suraka was the one when Professor Asma was traveling with uh, Abu Bakr, migrating from Mecca to Medina. He was the one who wanted to kill Professor Allah was planning to kill him. And any time he became closer to him, his horse used to be what? The legs used to go stuck. Until Professor Asma told him, said, what are you doing? Why are you not becoming Muslim? That one day, all these things of Persia, because Persia by that time it was the superpower. The necklace of that king, it will be given to you. So Professor Solomon said this thing, he said, I hear it. He said, the expedition we took after the death of Professor Allah to that Persia place, Adi, he said, I was with them. And you were able to conquer that place. And the same necklace that you're talking about, it, you came and it was given to Suraka. He said, That is true. He said, The third one, the time will come that money will become so abundant that the people, nobody will accept Sadaqah. No zakat. And nobody will accept it. You come and say, Oh, I have already. I don't need it. Until the person will be carrying the courier and then he will throw it in the street. Because nobody, nobody is going to take it. So he said, I saw the first one and I saw the second one. But the third one, I haven't seen it yet. But I know that since the Prophet Muhammad had said it, after me also, it will come to pass. And the time will come. There are people who may not need those money again. So this time that you may get people to get it, to receive it, do it. Before that time comes, then you cannot get anybody to take it for you. Okay. So, uh, our main, uh, what is called, uh, lessons that you are learning from uh, these sessions. First, 
Let us put our trust upon Allah. And putting your trust upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest thing. And secondly, obey the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's not with us, but his sayings, his doings, his approval of things, you must obey them. And don't forget your salat. And when you are making your sajda, make it properly. Because some of us, how they make their sajda, they go like this. That's not sajda. Some of them, even when they come from sajda, they do not even sit. And then they just go back again. And you know that between the sajda and the sitting, there is something there, isn't it? What do you say? What do you say? Subhana Rabbi Allah. Yeah. No, it's when. No. Oh. When, in other words, during the sajda, you say Subhana Rabbi Allah. Okay? Yeah. Because you have to in each raka, isn't it? Yeah. So you go to the first one and you come and sit. Between that period, before you go to the second sajda, what do you say? Rabbi Firli. Okay, at least Rabbi Firli. For Hamni, Warafini, Warzukum. Rabbi Firli, Warhamni, Warafini, Warzukum. What do you say? Rabbi Firli, Warhamni, Warafini, Warzukum. This is very great. Do you understand? You understand it, isn't it? Rabbi Firli means what? Oh Allah, forgive me. War harmony and have mercy, Mashar. Wa afini. Make me what? Make me able to remember. Make me sound in health and everything. War zukuni. Rizik, Rizik. Rizik, provision. Provision. Where do you find these? Subhanallah. These four things are very important to us, isn't it? We need the maghfara from Allah, forgiveness. We need His what? Rahmah, isn't it? And al afia everybody wants health, sound health, isn't it? And the Rizik, provisions, everybody wants that. You say this, but people, they don't say it. It goes so light. Subhanallah. You know, even say Subhanallah Rabbi Allah three times, the person does not. Some of them even, their forehead does not. They even touch the ground. And the greatest part of your ibadah is that of the sajda. That's the greatest part, isn't it? Because you read it, Allah said, all these creations, they make sajda. The trees, the leaves going here and there, is making what? Sajda. Subhanallah. And you don't want to do it. May Allah forgive us. Amen. Next time you talk about uh, istizan, the permission of our children and even ourselves when we are going to people's homes and so forth, what are you supposed to do? You know, some of us, mashallah, they are very good. When they locked the door and so forth, they already inside. and they did not hear anything, they will go there and peep through that window. And see what is happening. And see what is happening. <laughs> All these things are not right. But inshallah, you talk about that when we is in the Hitara. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Jazakumullah khairan. Reward all of us. Jazakumullah khairan. We come to the end of the session today. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Nashallah ilaha 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 